you have a horse with laminitis or founder, or, but you know, obviously, what, what can you do in the first instance? What can you do? Soft bedding. Brilliant. And trim his feet. Good. You've answered. You've fixed my whole tutorial. Good. Okay. <laughs> no, absolutely. Both those things. And as you can tell, I'm, I'm not a farrier, but I, I did um, trap Ian Hughes in my office and, and shut the door and made him answer all my questions and made sure I was up on the latest before this talk. Um, yes, soft bedding is really important. We want to, if they're really severe, you want them to lie down. In fact, there's been some research from Sweden where they actually lowered the roof. And um, when I was a student many years ago now, we had a, our laminitis bay actually had a low roof so they would lie down. Um, soft bedding, don't leave a big gap in front of the door, around the water bucket, just the whole thing. You don't want, last thing you want is your laminitic sitting with its backside getting a pressure sore on the, right next to the door or standing on the concrete in front of the door where the rest of his bed's beautifully piled up. The whole box makes a mess. Grooms hate you, but bad luck. They just have to deal with that. It's more important that your horse is uh, comfortable. And trim his feet. So does anybody want to um, consider how we might, what we might do with the feet? We've got a couple of um, volunteers here. This is called chestnut and the other one's black, even though it's probably brown, but we won't go there. So does anybody know what we... Take the toe back. Now, why do we want to take the toe back? That's a sore bit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, well, that's, okay, good. That's, you've, you've answered a couple of points that I'll go on to. I'll go on to the toe first. The toe's the sore bit as well as the bit that you don't want, they're not going to want to take weight on the toe. This is a picture of the blood supply of a normal horse's foot and a horse with laminitis. We've lost the blood supply to the front of his foot, okay? This, these, this area is also the most painful area and the last thing this horse wants to do, when this horse walks, he's going to go, longer the toe, the more stress along that front painful area. So the first thing your farrier is going to want to do is take back that toe and take off any the weight bearing from the toe. And the back part of the hoof is less damaged. The heel, the frog, and so we're going to be wanting to put something on the back of the hoof to support the weight. Okay? And that can and in an emergency situation, in the first situation, you might put something on that goes on really fast. Has anybody seen this? Anybody know what this is? Just, just styrofoam block. Good. These work really nicely on big horses because they crush down nicely. Little horses sometimes I've had them. They're a bit too light and because they're not weight bearing as well. They kind of you, know, you come in the next morning <laughs> sitting like this or something. But if it's a nice big horse and it crunches down nicely, they work really nicely as an emergency. Your vet might also put just some bandage material across the back there as well, or a bandage. I've got a picture of how to put the styrofoam blocks on. It's very basic. You put the um, duct tape on the ground and the block, walk the horse onto it and then you just pick it up. It's really easy. Everybody's got duct tape. Do you need all four feet then? Um, we usually do just the front feet depending on the horse um, because normally the pain's worse in the front feet because they carry more of their body weight on the front feet. But some horses are worse in the, in the, in the hind feet. Um, obviously you have to do, if you do one, you know, you do the pairs. But um, we normally do just the front feet. Uh, yes, a bit, but but um, in some you know in some horses it, it, they can actually really weight bear a lot more on their hind feet, and because it, it doesn't make them as unbalanced as you think. I mean, if you think about wearing high heeled shoes or whatever, you know, you you might be a bit different, but you alter your weight bearing to compensate for the unbalance that you've had. So they do tend to cope quite well, and we do almost invariably just put them on the front feet. So all four feet, possibly, but as you know, they don't seem to get as much you know, mechanical pain with the hind feet. Um, other things you can put on, uh, in Australia we used to have this dental impression material, it came in two pots, you mix it together, it gets nice and warm, you have to wear gloves and then you mix it in and put a nice little thing at the back as well. Yep, so that's trimming. Uh, acute, there was something else I was going to say, acute, but I can't remember now. Let's talk, let's move on to chronic, oh yeah, lily pads, that's what I was going to say. You can just put lily pads on as well in the short term. I don't like lily pads as much as I like something across the whole back of the foot. This is a horse, this, we're moving on to the chronic anyway. It's a horse that was a chronic a shoe for a chronic laminitic and Ian nicely taped it on for me just because obviously this would fall out. They actually put the shoe on and then they use this, put this uh, resin in here and then it solidifies and it, it spreads that weight bearing. Okay. Does anybody know the name of this top shoe? Heart bar shoe, that's right, I'll put him on the black horse, fits the black horse better than the other one. And um, she does fit him 
I'll fit this horse. So what are the benefits of this shoe? This is more of your chronic laminitic now. Oh, it did fit in before. I just got to sit in there. Anyway, that's kind of good enough. What are the benefits of this shoe? Can you see what it's doing? Changes the weight to the back. See, the, the front of the toe's not even there. And if this was taken back a bit more, there'd be no weight bearing on the front of the toe. And sometimes they can even sit back even further. I can't sit it back because his hoof's in the way, but sometimes they can sit back even further and they can really take the weight off the back. What else is it compared to a normal shoe? The, it's got a bigger surface area, hasn't it? Yeah, it's broader, it's bigger surface area and it spreads the weight, obviously the frog can support the weight as well. So we've got the big surface area, you know, your normal shoe finishes here. So you obviously force over area is going to spread your, 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 your force. If your force is in a narrow area, you're going to have more force going up per, per area. Then you can put these in, these go in, in um, as a liquid and then it dries, the farrier holds the foot up until it dries or makes them stand on them actually, it even goes perfectly flat, flush against the ground. He lets it dry a little bit and then he lets it stand on them and then they fit in there perfectly. And these are quite good, you can start riding a horse in these shoes. I, I like these. How long would you leave them on for? Normally when the horse is laminitic you get them re-trimmed a lot more quickly than a normal horse. So usually sort of four, four or five weeks. Obviously any of these shoes, um, the heart bars in particular, you know, they can, as uh, um, Ian was telling me, they can kind of dig in if you're doing too much exercise. You've got to be a little bit careful. That's why sometimes this actually helps a bit because it takes away the ability for that this point to dig in, you know, and catch on the, but they, you know, but yeah, usually you trim them a bit more soon, like four, you know, four to five weeks rather than five to six weeks, much more frequently. Okay, okay, so that's the first thing. So altered weight bearing to the back of the foot, support, increased surface area. So that sort of things to manage his pain. Anything else you're thinking about? What have we talked about? We've talked about um, trimming his foot, supporting his foot, and deep bedding. Anything else? Painkillers, absolutely, very good. I've just got this one picture on painkillers just to remind you, just like aspirin, Butte can upset a horse's tummy and give a little bleed. This is, it affects that part of the stomach. And the other problem is worse than aspirin is horses have a large colon that can sometimes get a little bit affected by, or very affected by Butte, and they can get what's called colitis. When we get diarrhea or food poisoning, we're over it in 24 hours. Horses don't, they get very, very sick from it. It's like colic, they fall apart. And we don't want a horse to get colitis from butte. So just be a bit careful if your horse is on a really high dose of butte, make sure he's being closely monitored by your vet because it can be dangerous. So be a bit careful of that. That's why it's a, a regulated thing. Okay, a few other questions. What are all these made out of? Metal. Sometimes if your horse is particularly sore, you might want to think of something else. Anybody else? Plastic, yep. And so I've got my imprint shoe here. These are really cool. You can heat them and melt them and mold them around the foot. They can fit in quite nicely. And then you sort of glue them in. And that's obviously quite nice um, for these horses. I've got some pictures of some horses with some plastic shoes on and this glue there. I like this. Uh, this is aluminium too, just a bit lighter, a bit easier too. This one's an interesting one. In fact, a lot of people, you know, Years ago, we just put a reverse shoe on a horse, and look at this. It's all, that's what it is. It's a reverse shoe. It's just got the heart bar part of it as well to increase the surface area. So, you know, again, it's, it's, it's again remembering the biomechanics and, and the whole sort of which bit's painful and which bit's not. The front bit is going to be painful. You're going to want to shift the weight bearing to the back. And, um, you know, this has got a bit better surface area. It's got a lovely wide shoe as well. Um, but there's a lot of people I know, I know vet in the States, um, who's actually the veterinarian for those ponies that I told you about, the Welsh and Dartmoor ponies. He's, he swears by reverse. He says, oh, I just put a shoe on backwards, that's all I do. You know, it's his favourite thing. You can fill that full of resin and do what, you could put the shoe on backwards and not have your heart bar and fill the middle of resin. Probably have the same effect as well. So there's lots of options. This, anybody heard of wedging of the horse's foot? Yeah, yeah. We used to do this a lot. We don't do it as much anymore, so you've been used, this one. <laughs> Ian, Ian just gave me a few things out of his van. That's why I got him. I said, Ian, you've got to give me some stuff for this prac. Um, we used to use these more, but remember I told you the front of the foot's the ouch a bit. Stand him on his high heels. Puts the pressure on them. Why did we do this? Can anybody remember why we used to do this? Oh, actually, I think you, that's, you did say that. You were about to say it. Yeah. 
I'll answer for you. We did this because we were worried about the pull of the tendon that runs down the back here. You can actually see it in cross section there, the tendons here. We were worried, the deep digital flexor tendon would pull and we were worried about that worsening the rotation. We're not as worried about that anymore because sometimes it can actually be the front of the hoof sort of pushing forward with lots of granulation tissue as much as the deep digital flexor tendon. And quite frankly, some horses don't like a wedge because it hurts them more. If the horse is painful with a wedge, get it off, don't put it on. And we don't tend to, I spoke to Ian and, and he agrees, we don't tend to use the word wedges as first line emergency treatment now. Or, or we don't use them as much. And even if I was to use a wedge, this is made out of um, casting material, fiberglass. You, we probably use a much smaller wedge. And sometimes it's more the fact of a... Of a of a shoe just being a little bit thicker. In fact, this is quite a nice one, being a little bit wider at the heel there. Just a really small wedge, and that allows them to go back onto their heels a bit more and um, change the weight bearing. Um, so wedges, that's the main things I was going to talk about. Why don't you hop up and have a look at the pictures? Oh, that's the last thing I was going to talk about. Pressure. Sometimes in cases of laminitis, and you saw some pictures of these in the talks, um, we get pressure building up on the front. Remember that I said they've got no blood supply. Um, well, sometimes limited blood supply. We've got inflammation in these lamellae. And when things get inflamed, what happens if you, if you stick a, um, if you injure this, your hand with a big splinter in it, it's going to get swollen and hot and ooze kind of stuff, isn't it? Some nasty. Well, same thing happens inside the horse's foot. This can bring up pressure and sometimes that needs to be removed, um, either by rasping it back or cutting it back or, or even doing a full hoof wall resection. Um, and how do we know to do that? I've got some pictures of an x-ray here and we call this a gas shadow. In fact, one of the, um, the leaders asked me, is it a gas shadow? Well, actually, it's not really gas. It's, it's, it's inflammatory exudate, it's serum and ooze. And if you look closely at this picture here, you can actually see it coming out. So um, sometimes we need to go to drastic measures to do that and, um, and your, your farrier will um, tell you about that. So